You cannot talk about the economic history of Africa without analyzing the Trans-Saharan trade route. The Trans-Saharan trade route was a long distance trade relationship between the Africans living in the West African region and Africans living in North African region and in extension the Arab world to a certain level the trade expanded towards the East African area. It is called the Trans-Saharan trade because the movement of goods, merchants, and even services was drawn was done through the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert, as a matter of fact, is one of the largest deserts on Earth. Some Authors refer to the Sahara Desert as the third largest desert on Earth. The, the Trans-Saharan trade route was very important towards African development, towards African interactions within themselves and also the outside world. In the early stage of this business, long distance trade, Cattle or oxen we are used. The tough nature of the Sahara Desert made it a bit difficult for merchants to cross completely. In the early stage, they made use of cattle, oxen, precisely, that were able to carry some goods. They were able to carry a, a very large quantity of goods and could withstand to a certain level the harshness of the Sahara Desert. But it was still a bit difficult. So the business was basically being conducted through the middle men structures. Most of the dwellers of the desert dwellers acted as middlemen between the people living at the um, North African area and some living in the West African area. But with time, a very important animal that played a very important role towards the success of the Trans-Saharan trade route was introduced. And that was the camel. Prior to this time, oxen, donkeys, and also horses were gradually introduced. But the introduction of camel changed a lot of things. It became very possible for merchants to travel with their goods from North Africa to the West part of Africa. But the introduction of camel actually brought some changes because camel was able to withstand harsh conditions. Camel was able to cover very long distance without drinking water or even eating. The, although the camel looks sluggish, but it is a tough animal. And was able to carry some loads, although the quantity or the, the quantity of load that a camel could carry and that of the oxen is a bit different. The oxen was able to carry more than the camel, but the camel had the capacity of covering a long distance without even drinking water or eating because of the fats stored in the camel's body and as well the water storage in the, in the camel's body. Well, the Trans-Saharan trade route created a lot of things within the region. It led to the establishment of trading towns. It led to the establishment of important trading towns. Before we go to that, 
let's look at the, the earliest part of the business was basically exchange. The desert dwellers were able to exchange salt with the uh, food growers in the northern part of Africa and also the west part of Africa. This was because the, the Sahara dwellers could not, that was actually the, the major source of their food. Well, this so importance of salt, actually the, 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 the Africans living in West Africa, which we refer to as the Sudan in history, we are in their need of salt. Because it was a bit difficult to get salt from another source of salt for these people was from the coastal area. But to transfer salt from the coastal area to them was a bit difficult in the sense that most of the salts could not get to that area. So important salt trading terms, we are introduced, some of them, we are Tahaza, another one was Taodeni, and then another one was Taotek. Now in addition to this, some important trading towns as well, we are introduced. Now let's look at some of the products, before we go back to this, some of the products that we are trading upon in the trans saharan trade. Some of them, we are salt, gold, and cola nuts, ivory, in exchange for other products. Now, through the Sahara Desert, goods from Europe entered West Africa. Through the Trans Saharan trade route, goods from Europe entered West Africa. But these goods were actually transmitted through the Arab world. From the Arab world, they moved these goods to North Africa, where the Berbers play a very important role in the transmission of these goods down to West Africa, where it was made in exchange for products found or uh, cultivated or created in West Africa. Some other products were uh, spices, beads, and glasses. Uh, but the influence and importance of Sahara Desert can be witnessed on the time on, on, on the creation of some important trading towns. Some of them were the Agades, the other ghosts, the um, I think I mentioned Taza, which was a sort trading town, and a very important historical business or trading town in Africa called Timbuktu. Timbuktu see now still hold very strong uh, importance in African history because it was a very well-developed town. Well, the uh, Trans-Saharan trade route led to the establishment of some routes. The Trans-Saharan trade led to the establishment of some, of some routes. Now let us look at some of these routes. The main route was from Sijil Masa, Sijil Masa and Tagaza in Morocco to Timbuktu. Sijil Masa and Tagaza in Morocco down to Timbuktu. Then merchants collected uh, products and moved them. And Products from the places, places like Fez, uh, Marrakesh in Morocco, and then they send them down. Some other areas we are to Adeni, Arawan. These are all important trade towns within this route. Now the Sijimasa and Tahaza trade from Morocco ended up to the main target was Timbuktu. Now, the next one 
was the second route that we have to look at for was the route from Tunis and Tawara to Hausa land. Tunis from Taiwan to Hasalam. Constantine in Algeria as well was also a very important entry port. Entry port route. This route passed through Gad and Agades. The southern terminus of this route were Castina and later Kanu. Agades was a very important town on this route. For Agades was important because the area had very good, very good grazing environment, whereby some of the animals that were involved in the trans-Saharan trade were made to, you know, giving time to graze and eat within that area. Kanu was very famous in the trans-Saharan trade for its dye industry. Dye industry, clothes were sent all the way from North Africa. All the way from Tripoli, all the way from most cities in North Africa, down to Kano for the, those, these clothes to be dyed and returned back to North Africa. That shows you the very importance of uh, the trans Saharan trade. The next route we have to look out for was the Tripoli route, the Tripoli in Libya to Bono. Two important towns in this route were Mosuk and Tokwa. They were very important towns along this trade route, which specialized, this route specialized mainly on slave trading and at the same time sword trade. The first one we have to look out for was the eastward route, which was from Kanembono Empire, by the way, by the way of Darfur, to the Middle East and then towards the through the Egypt area. That was, that was the fourth route. The important thing here is that the, 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 the trans-Saharan trade as well contributed to a lot of things. Another thing was that the trans-Saharan trade led to the emergence of some important political units. It contributed to the emergence of um, uh, uh, Ghana Empire. This was because the, 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 the pure desertification of the region started making some nomads, nomadic elements within that region to start moving southwest towards um, West Africa. Then their movement started putting pressure on some settled groups like the Soninke. The Soninke before this period has, have already uh, introduced the use of iron. So they started bringing some unity within themselves in order to defend themselves because this migration led to crisis, led to disagreements and issues. So it played a, a role, a very important role towards the establishment of um, Ghana Empire and some other political structures within that area. Now let's look at the impact. But let's first of all have a little discussion on the organization. Because the Saharan Desert was the route upon which these uh, merchants and their goods were uh, passed through, that doesn't mean that it was easy to navigate the Saharan Desert. No, it was very difficult. But the organization the, 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 the merchants made use of guides, made use of uh, desert dwellers that knew the route in order to have access to it. Now, they avoided uh, getting involved in some parts of the years. Their time for, for the, the departure from either side was mainly towards the end of rainy season, when the dangers of sandstorm was on the low rate. It was very dangerous to travel in small numbers. Then, the time for departure was regulated so that many groups of the caravan could leave at the same time. Where the capital for this trade was provided by the wealthy merchants from North Africa, who possessed a large number of camels. 
and they had enough money to buy sophisticated, uh, uh, sufficient articles for the trade. Where they paid for protection money to the desert people and guards. The merchants spent considerable length of time to cover up you know, a time of almost nine months in other terminus of the route, trading with local people. This enhanced cultural and religious influence. Now, you can see the, this actually was one of the means upon which Islam was introduced in West Africa, was through the, the, this uh, relationship. The desert dwellers play a very important role. They started as middlemen, but when matters started passing through, they started making use of uh, utilizing the, the activities through guides and also started getting involved in the business. So then we are very uh, aggressive and you have to pay your way through it. Now, the desert used to be very hot in the afternoon. In the night, it used to be very cold. So you can see how difficult it is. It was and it is still, is still now. So let us look at some dangers associated in, in this. There are many dangers, you know, that the, the merchants faced. First was, we mentioned the sandstorm. The sandstorm was very dangerous, even till now. If you have an issue going to the Sahara Desert, you have to be aware that there's a possibility of sandstorm which can bury somebody alive and leave the person's dead. Now, as I said, it was impossible, it was a bit difficult to navigate during the rainy season. The next one was bandits. There were issues with banditry. Some aggressive and overzealous bandits, we must, in, in some cases, attacked merchants, stole their properties, and even killed some of them. Another danger was the risk of getting missing. The risk of getting missing. That's why most times this. Uh, merchants would decide to go the same time in order to, you know, to look out for each other. Then there was a heavy danger of inability to get enough water. The issue of the desertification led to the drying up of some very few sources of water, leading to reliance of oasis. Well, with the help of the guides, these merchants were able to know where and where to stop in order to get their source of water, enough that will guide them and the period upon which the, the, the water they have will lead them to. Well, as I said as well, the desert can be hot in the afternoon and very cold at night, making it very difficult. So, the, this, at the time as well, within this period, some level of slave, slave trade we are introduced. And slaves were sometimes being used by these merchants to move their goods to and fro the Sahara Desert. But there was importance to this. The Sahara Desert brought a lot of changes, brought a lot, a lot of uh, developments. Notable, one of the ones who have said earlier was the Timbuktu. Now it also made Introduce a kind of acculturalization, uh, introduce uh, architectural, uh, new architectural designs. For instance, the use of blocks or bricks we are introduced mainly in some parts of West Africa to the interactions with um, some of the merchants. And very importantly, Islam was introduced. Well, at the time as well, the external or long distance business relationship in African economic history shifted from the Sahara Desert area to the coastal areas. This was after the Europeans came to the coastal area and uh, Af Africans within the West African region started realizing 
that the transatlantic trade was actually given more, less, less um, uh, dangerous, and then, but and at the same time, creating more wealth. The shift moved from the trans Saharan trade towards the transatlantic trade. And the shift affected the influence of the trans Saharan trade. Well, this shift went ahead to be a detrimental one to Africa because it was through there the Europeans entered into the hinterland, conquered most parts of Africa, and established colonial rule. Wow. Well, if you're watching us for the very first time, please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification icon so that anytime we introduce a new topic, we'll be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Thanks for still being part of this channel.